Okay. Hello. Today we're going to create our first Atari app on a clean Windows 11 system, including setting up all prerequisites. I'm going to start with a very, very clean Windows 11 system, like a VM. Here I'm remotely connected into a Windows 11 system. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is it's not that complicated uh, if you're uh, familiar with the environment and the tools. But if you're not, uh, I thought uh, recording is sometimes more helpful than uh, explanations, especially the explanations that cover multiple operating systems. Uh, this is just Windows 11, uh, just doing your first Tori app. Uh, so it's not that complicated, uh, so it shouldn't take us that long either. Uh, I'm not going to talk about why you might want to use Tori. There's lots of other sources of information for that. Uh, but for me, I like it that Tori supports Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. And I'm looking forward to network programming in Rust. So this video is for developers just getting started with Tori, not Tori users. And it's uh, beginner developers. So I'm following instructions from the Tori website uh, for around April 2025. And the goal is uh, that you can see what I'm going through, what I'm clicking on, uh, what it takes to set up if you're having issues um, setting it up and getting it to work on your system. Uh, maybe it's easier for me because it's clean, but uh, you never know. You never know what to remove on your dev system to get it to work. What I hope in the future is to um, do follow-ups to this f to uh, show just getting started on all the other different operating systems. And then uh, the next goal is to do the auto update. I was having some problems with a Mac on that, so I thought I'd switch to Windows that I'm more familiar with and hopefully won't require as much signing. So here goes. So to show that I've got nothing up my sleeve, go to the control panel and show that there isn't much installed on this system. Actually, this is just a low-end physical Windows box. And always best to get started with reading the instructions. Since I'm doing it on Windows, I switched to PowerShell. And I was almost ready to click on that, but actually you need to install Visual Studio first as a prerequisite. So we'll get that started downloading. And you can probably install just some of the C++ development tools, but I went ahead and installed all of the Visual Studio Community Edition. At the instructions talk about just the build tools, C++ build tools, but I'm familiar with going down this path, so that's what I went with. C++ desktop. So those blue check boxes over on the right, you could probably figure out which ones you need and don't need, but sometimes it's easier just to have them. Shotgun approach. This is Windows 11, so WebView should already be installed. I don't have Rust. And if you get an error, uh, says some of the PowerShell can't be run, it's typically because it's uh, on a clean system, you 
don't have development settings for PowerShell. It's not under Windows Update. Developer mode is what you want. Probably don't need device discovery, but I'm going to need it later on with some network programming later on. And that's what we need to let some of these PowerShell scripts take full control of the system. When in doubt, restart your shell. At this time, you don't need to go into Visual Studio. Sometimes launching it will set up default configurations like your editor profile. So I'd let it go ahead and start. I wasn't sure if it was going to put anything in the System32, which is not a good idea. So just created a temporary directory. So now we're downloading and installing Rust. Tool chain. Okay, and uh, it's just going to be for Windows 11, what we're trying to get running right here. Uh, so we're not going to do any of the mobile targets. <clears throat> and you want to look for some of that x86 underscore 64 PC Windows settings. So that looks good. So next is Node to get the JavaScript ecosystem set up.
and a couple checks to see do we actually get it installed and the version with a new shell. So that looks good. Skipping all over, skipping the mobile targets. And now finally into out of the prerequisites and just creating the test project. And probably should have gotten out of this command prompt first and gone back into PowerShell. Now it's downloading the Tori templates. And I went with uh, defaults, um, but instead of PNPM, I just stuck with the NPM. So refreshing this, see we've installed like Visual Studio, the S Windows SDK, um, Node, and some of the C++ dependencies. And these look like steps in case you want to um, go down different paths. I'm just sticking with a very basic. And after that it's installed, then we can run Tori in a development developer mode. And that should start downloading and compiling lots of things that were set up by the template. And I think uh, at some point, yeah, we've cut a little bit of time out of this, jumped to the 369 out of 394. Cut as in cut the video to just make it a little bit shorter.
and this should bring up the Tori Hello World sample app and um, show communication between the front end and the rust back end with inner process communication. There it is. And those uh, UI tools uh, or commands get sent over to the rust side and then reply back. That's it. So not a big deal uh, when everything works right, but it's sometimes extremely frustrating when it's just not working for you. So I hope that helped. That's it. Thanks.